Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build this pull-up bar. I'm Aaron Robinette, head coach of athletic power and performance. Don't be in peace, train holistically. Going into this build, the one thing I wanna point out is I'm actually showing you this build. I've already built this. I've had this built for a while, but to actually show you how to build this, I need to disassemble it. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disassemble this, show you a few things, and then we're gonna reassemble. And then hopefully this is gonna help you build your own pull-up bar. Now we're at a complete state of disassemble. So I disassembled the whole pull-up bar, but I want to show you something where this pull-up bar originated from. So this is the exact setup I had originally. I'm gonna step on my step here, show you. I actually had this bolted to a two by six, so two by six piece of wood, so I can actually hit it in the, uh, the joist in the ceiling. And I had this hung up here so something like this. And there's a lot of advantages to this, this little setup. You can do all your suspension straps, you can do all the pull-ups you wanna do, assisted pull-ups, different things like that. I wanted something a little bit more. I wanted to make sure I had the uprights for various reasons, I'll go into the videos. But this guy right here, the other advantage is it's much less expensive. But that guy you can get away with uh, probably roughly $40, maybe even under for a build like this, which is not what I'm gonna show, but you can see, very simple, two joints. You have, uh, again, four foot bar, uh, one foot bar on each side, and then the flange to mount it to, and then you need a two by six, or something to mount it directly to the ceiling, because the joists are gonna be a little bit off, they're gonna be in a little different uh, position, so that's why you want the, the extra wood to mount this to. So I wanted to show that before I get into the whole build as I built it and have it today. Getting into the build, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is these upright pieces. So as you know this, I actually already have the ends, the uh, coupler or the uh, joint already installed. I wouldn't install any of the lower pieces and I'll talk about that shortly. But these guys I wanna talk about first of all, this is uh, roughly about seven feet tall. My ceiling's almost eight and a half feet tall. So I wanted to make sure to have a height to where when I got the top post or the pull-up bar, the actual bar part, I had some clearance so I wasn't hitting my head as I was doing the pull-ups. I found that the seven feet height really worked. So these are actually originally, so the size of this is a one inch diameter black pipe I had this cut, uh, it was a 10 feet piece originally, I had this cut to seven feet, and actually the other section right here, I'm gonna use on the back end of the base, and I'll show you that shortly. So I was able to use the entire piece. There was no extra charge for the custom cut. I did this over at Home Depot roughly a year and a half ago. So with that, I have uh, seven feet tall, two and a half or three feet on the back end, actually three feet on the front end, two feet on the back end for the base. The top bar, the actual pull-up bar itself, that one is four feet tall or four feet wide. And these measurements, all the measurements and everything I'm using for this build are gonna be down in the notes for the video. So let's get started. The first thing we wanna do is install the joints onto the top bar. I wanna start from the top bar and build down from there. And the reason is, if I were to build the bottom first and then I were to actually screw on all the other pieces, I would have the big, massive thing. So if I were to take this guy, I would have the uh, bottom two posts on there, the bottom two pieces of pipe on there, and then I have to screw it in there, that whole thing would be swinging around. So you wanna make sure, actually, to start from the top bar first, 
And in this case, we're going to work up and work down, and I'll talk about that shortly as well. So we're going to get my four feet piece, and let's start getting the assembly. So the for this, I have an iron cross for this guy, so that's going to go on right there. And the purpose for this, originally when I had the upright version built, I only had the elbow on here, so the elbow came down to the upright. But I was having issues with um, this whole thing sliding out, and I needed to secure it. So I tried to actually install it and secure it to the wall, but I still had the pipes flexing, especially when I was using suspension straps. So I wanted to mount this, and I had a choice, either try and mount it to the back wall behind this uh, drop cloth, here or mounted to the ceiling. In this case, I chose to mount it to the ceiling. So that's why I had the iron cross. Iron cross because I wanted another piece where I could actually hang some stuff and use it as functional as part of the uh, use for the pull-up bar. So that's why I had the iron cross there. The other thing I want to talk about before I assemble any more is I have this, uh, the whole base and everything, actually I bolted down to two by sixes Again, I'll give you the measurements in the notes, but the two by six, so it's, uh, the front is open because I want to be able to actually move and use this space when I'm working out and not trip over anything. But they have these two by sixes, uh, one piece here, one piece here, and then mounted to a back piece there with some brackets back there. So that's how I attach that. And I'll talk about shortly how I attach the actual pieces onto the two by sixes. So again, let's get into the build. And you want to make sure as you install these coupler pieces that you line these up so that when the joints on the other side, they're actually straight down. And you want to make sure to secure those. So I'm going to get my handy pipe wrench. And I'm actually going to get another piece here. So this is going to go on the top. And this is going to help me actually have a little bit of something to hang on to to tighten these joints. Get my handy pipe wrench, get that go in the correct direction, and then I'll just kind of secure it that way. And that way it gets a good and snug. I want to do that same thing here. Okay, and both of those are installed. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side, making sure in this particular case, when I get this all secured, that I have the, first of all, the pipe in the right side and the pipes lined up so they're even with each other because that would be obviously problematic if I didn't have those even. I'm just going to check this on the floor. Pretty close but I still need to get a little bit more. Make sure get this guy tight also. Okay, this guy's pretty secure. One more measurement there. That looks pretty even. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the top pieces, but I'm going to install them while this is laying on the ground so it's a little bit easier to handle. So this is the seven piece upright, seven foot upright piece that I'm now putting in the joint, in the iron cross joint. And then the one thing I want to make sure of is this guy is perpendicular to that iron cross up there. And install the other seven foot piece. Okay, so we are installed on the upright, so I'm gonna actually lift this guy up. Before I lift it up, I'm gonna install the, the back end pieces. So the little short two feet pieces. And that way I have something to kind of go against. So as I lift this thing up, it's not wobbling as I'm trying to install the other front pieces or both these uh, base pieces. And I'm going to stop right here. I want to talk a little bit about the tool I'm using. So I'm using a, just a standard pipe wrench. Not a huge one, just a nice good size that has a little bit of leverage. And uh, you can use other tools, but I definitely suggest if you're going to do a project, especially even getting into the one I'm doing, maybe even the one hanging, I originally started with this video talking about, the one where I hung it up to the ceiling. It would be a good idea to have a pipe wrench. It actually protects the pipe. It's easier to use. 
it's easy to kind of wrench on it and then you can just let off like that and wrench and wrench and wrench versus using something like these. These do come in handy since I only have one pipe wrench. Occasionally I get something stuck, I need the, uh, the big pipe grips right here. But these will actually start to put indentations into the pipe and you don't want that, especially when you're doing pull-ups and different things like that. You want a nice smooth surface that the pipe comes with. You don't want it jarred up or screwed up with one of these. So it may cost a little bit of money, add a little bit of money to your build, but it's definitely worth it, especially if you ever reconfigure it as well. So that's the thing I wanted to talk about as far as tools. The next thing I do want to talk about is now mounting to the base as I'm getting ready to do that with, once I get this up right, I'm going to install the other piece, then I'll mount it. But I want to talk about what I'm mounting it to and what I'm using to do that. So I'm using just a half inch thick poplar and it's two inch wide and I cut it to length just the width of the two by six, so roughly six inches. And then I'm taking these brackets. So again, I'm using a one inch pipe. So I'm using one inch brackets uh, just with two lags. So two lags about this length. I think these are about two, two and a half inch long. And that way when I put the pipe down, so I put the, put this guy down, the pipe goes on top of it and I can put my bracket in and just screw the lags all the way in through. You want to make sure you don't have it too long. So you don't want to go all the way through this, the two by six into the ground or whatever surface you're mount, mounting this or setting this on. So you want to make sure it's short enough. It's long enough to grip, grip all the way through the poplar into the two by six, but not too long to where it goes through the two by six. So having said that, I'm actually, I've already pre-drilled the holes since I've already built this. I'm just reassembling it. I'm going to put these guys in the rightful place and that's going to help me when I mount this back onto the 2x6. Now I'm going to lift this guy up, set it roughly into place. I'm going to put those other two pieces on. Not so concerned with getting it exactly in place just yet because I want to make sure I get at least one of these guys on first. As you can see, this guy wants to lean towards me. Once I get this first piece on, always helps if you have a second person, but if you don't, be safe but make sure you manage, uh, use what you need. Okay, going on to the second side, we're gonna do that same thing. A little bit easier now that I have something that is bracing. Okay, I wanna make sure I secure this. So using my uh, handy dandy pipe wrench, let's make sure that's secure. Okay, so we're not done with the pipe wrench yet, but we're pretty close. So now I want to get this set on the braces. So one thing to point out in this particular guy, so as you're doing these, you want to pre-drill the holes. So I like to pre-drill the holes just a little bit smaller than the actual lag. That way the lag has something to grip onto. So the meat of the lag, so not just a little bit smaller than the threads, but just a slight bit smaller or about the same size as the meat. So that's the actual part inside the threads. And what you want to do there is pre-drill the holes exactly where you want them, exactly where they're lined up with the brackets. And that way, uh, you have something to kind of grip on and it makes it a little bit easier as you install these. So you install them a little bit easier like I'm able to do since I've already done that. I've already drilled these, put them in, and they've uh, been secure once. So it's just a matter of lining the holes up again.
Okay, now at this stage of the build, we have the uprights up. We got the base mounted to the 2x6s with the poplar, the half inch thick poplar by 2 inch wide, cut to length, and then those are secured by the lags. So the next thing I'm going to do is not the inst installation on the top. I'm actually going to install these pieces right mm -hmm. here. Then we'll install it to the top. So the first thing we're going to do is I already have uh, the end caps on these installed. They don't come pre-installed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to assemble these, each one of these. So this is just simply an L bracket. So these are four inch pieces, four inch threaded pieces, an elbow bracket with an end cap. So I'm going to put one of those there onto the elbow and then I'm going to put the other one here. And so hopefully this one shows better. So I'm going to start with this one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hand tighten this to get this thread started. So I want to make sure both pieces are tight. So I'm going to tighten everything with the pipe wrench once I get this set. As you know this, this has a lot of flex. That's the reason why I wanted this. With the suspension straps, there was a lot of bowing, a lot of flexing, a lot of moving. Even the pull-ups had a lot of flex. So that's why I wanted to install it up to the top. Again, I'm going to get into that shortly, but let's get this. So before I get that too far, I'm going to get this piece tight. Might be good if I tighten that instead of using it. And that's going to be nice and tight. I want to make sure you get that all the way perpendicular to the ground. Almost there. There. As I was just demonstrating, it's very hard to install these when you turn it the wrong way. So now they gotta go in the right way, went right in. You notice there is a, a bit of a gap. So I'd say it's about three inch gap between the top of the pipe and the ceiling. And that was not by design. Unfortunately, that was a mistake on my part. These, this one is a six inch piece. I probably could have used an eight inch piece and then a, uh, just a small piece of wood. Unfortunately, I didn't, I misjudged that. So instead, what I've done is I've actually kind of made my own piece of wood that's kind of a makeshift. It's really snug in there, as you see here shortly. Okay, from here, I'm gonna get my blocks, I'm gonna install those, drill those in place, Drill the flanges to those blocks and the installation will be complete. On this build, on this time, I was able to actually slip that in. I was able to tighten these up just enough. Last time I put this together, I'll see if I did it on that side as well. I had to take my rubber mallet to really pound this. In this case, this time, this is enough. There's enough room here where I can actually slide this into place. Uh, and it's just got a little bit of a, a wiggle room, so I'm able to adjust it, make it bolt everything, and secure it. So that's much nicer than the way I had it last time. Make sure on this, especially because there's a lot of uh, dust coming down and all that. Uh, I like to wear my glasses as I install this. Just installed the last screw. You can take the glasses off. And one thing I want to show is outside of a little bit of movement from the base, this guy is very secure. So I can do all the exercises. I'm going to show you a couple things. The reason why I like these, other than just to have something that extra storage like the jump ropes, the tubing, and all that. I can also do a couple exercises. I'll show you two different reasons. 
why I wanted the uprights versus that original bar I showed you. So there, again, you can go a long way with that original bar hanging just from the ceiling. As long as you secure it up to the, the ceiling with enough, uh, with the right lags, the right hardware and all that, that'll be solid, that'll really serve you well. But if you want, uh, I urge you, if you're interested, with this guy with the uprights, you can do a lot of rotation with the tubing. Of course, you can do your pull-ups and all that. And the reason why, again, I have this piece, is I can hang this over just like that, and then do a high-low, so a wood chop. So a lot of variety there. So all in all, this is the build. This guy should cost you under $150. Now granted, this is not as versatile, say, as a squat rack, but it's going to be a lot more economical. You'll be able to have it up and installed uh, if you have a little bit of mechanical knowledge within, I'd say, a couple hours. Just kind of figuring out where you want to put it. That may take you a little bit longer. Since I actually had this already installed, I disassembled it, reassembled it. I did that roughly with uh, having all the cameras and everything set up, of course. I did that roughly probably about an hour and a half minus a couple breaks here and there having to get things set up but i did that roughly an hour and a half to completely disassemble it and reassemble it obviously i had the uh, ability with this doing this i already had it assembled i already knew where it was going to go the base was already cut everything was in place so that made things a lot quicker i had all the pieces already when i disassembled it and reassembled it again this project with the the one hanging from the ceiling that should take you roughly an hour. This one, freestanding, maybe a couple hours, maybe even three or four hours, uh, depending on what your skill level is, what you need to do to figure out where you want to put it and all that. So having said that, if you really got some value out of this, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to finding out how this works for you. Give me some comments, tell me if this was beneficial to you, how it works, what you're going to use it for and other comments like that. So I look forward to seeing you on the next video.